Ladies and gentlemen, coming straight to you from the Incisive Media Studio in London. It's now time to recognize all the finalists and honor our winners as we welcome you to the Women in Law Awards 2020. Please welcome to the floor your host for the awards, Managing Director of Events. It's Simone Broadhurst. Hello and welcome to the first ever Women in Law Awards. When we launched these awards back in November last year, we didn't expect they were taking place nearly a year later and by way of a virtual event. I was looking forward to meeting you all in a swanky London hotel, all of us dressed the nines in suits and floor length dresses. I'm sure I speak for many of you when I say it's been a while since I've been in a long dress with champagne flute in my hand. Life certainly looks very different now, but despite the challenges the coronavirus has thrown at us, the show must and has gone on with our judging panel meeting virtually to deliberate on nearly 400 entries generated by 800 nominations. The judges were bowled over by the quality of the entries and the inspirational stories they told, not only about our finalist battle against the odds to achieve their successes, but also the steps they are taking to ensure those women following in their footsteps find themselves on more of a level playing field. So a big well done to everybody who made the shortlist and of course, to our winners. We're nearly ready to kick off but it wouldn't be an, afternoon, an awards afternoon without being asked to part with some of your hard earned cash for the sake of a good cause. Today's chosen charity partner is Women's Aid, who do fantastic work helping survivors of domestic abuse and who have been working especially hard to ensure the voices of women experiencing abuse have been heard during the pandemic. We're now going to show you a short video and afterwards there will be the opportunity to donate some money via a Just Giving link and the chance to bid in a silent auction, the proceeds of which will all go to Women's Aid. An estimated 1.6 million women experienced domestic abuse in the UK last year. Three women are killed every fortnight by their male partner or former partner. The past six months have had a huge impact on all of our lives. Being in lockdown meant being confined to our homes with those in our household for almost 24 hours a day. Women's Aid knows that home is not a safe place for many women and children experiencing abuse. And when the government announced the lockdown, we knew this would have a significant negative impact. COVID-19 does not cause domestic abuse, only abusers are responsible for their actions. However, the pandemic has escalated abuse and made it harder for women to leave. It has shone a spotlight on an already existing crisis and it can no longer be ignored. Two thirds of survivors reported their abuses using lockdown and the virus itself as a means of abuse. And over three quarters of survivors living with their abuser reported the pandemic made it harder to leave. At Women's Aid, we have seen a huge impact on all of our work. As the national charity working to end domestic abuse against women and children, our combination of training, campaigning and research makes real change in the response to domestic abuse. And our support services, such as our live chat helpline and survivors forum, help thousands of women every year. Thanks to your support, Women's Aid is able to keep working towards a society where domestic abuse is no longer tolerated. We really appreciate any support you can give. Together, we can end domestic abuse. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video and thank you for the donations made or items bidded on. It's all going to a great cause. Now, finally, 
the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to kick off this year's Women in Law Awards and find out who our winners are today. For every award you'll see the shortlisted names on screen. We will then tell you if we have any highly commended accolades to award and of course who our winner is for each category. Thanks Simon, what a welcome. Today we have some very special guests to help us reveal the winners. Our esteemed panel of judges and supporters will feature and help reveal all. We begin with Dealmaker of the Year. Here are the finalists topping the charts. A worthy bunch, I'm sure you'll agree. First up, we have Kennedy's Ingrid Hobbs to reveal the winner. Over to you, Ingrid. The winner stood out for her wonderful deal achievements, combined with her expanded roles in management, which make her a great role model. The winner is Laura Sizemore of White and Case. Congratulations, Laura. Well done, Laura, and thank you, Ingrid. Now we move on to recognizing the Legal Advisor of the Year. Here are the people in the spotlight. We go to Kathleen Russ from Travis Smith now to reveal the winner. Congratulations to Artie Thacker. Um, the judges and I loved her selfless energy, her willingness to go the extra mile, and her work building charity regimes in developing countries. Massive congratulations to her. Well done to you. And now to another, this time honouring Litigators of the Year. Take a look at the finalists on the screen. Sonali Sirawardena from Morgan Stanley Investment Management will now tell us who the winner is. Hello, my name is Sonali Sirawardena from Morgan Stanley Investment Management. It has been a huge privilege being a judge at the Women in Law Awards 2020 and it's my distinct pleasure to announce the Litigator of the Year. There were several highly accomplished candidates shortlisted for this award, but the judges noted the winner's evident legal skills, displayed particularly in a recent Court of Appeal case, and also her work inspiring the next generation of women lawyers through the Rural Practices Network Initiative. The winner of Litigator of the Year is Charlotte Razy for Michelle Moores. Next up, we have the Legal Services Innovator of the Year. Here are the names in the vying for the prize. And I can tell you that as it was such a closely fought category, we have our first commendation. McFarlane's Laura Uberoy is here to tell us who has succeeded. The judges awarded a highly commended for innovation, delivering operational solutions for clients, as well as demonstrating great leadership. Highly commended is Janet Hall Morant. But the judges said the winner in this category scored so highly thanks to her work creating a modern and diverse set of chambers. It's my privilege to announce that the winner is Catherine Calder, Sergeants in Chambers. Thank you so much, that's lovely news. Um, of course, it reflects far more on Sergeants in Chambers and Council and clients than it ever could on me. Well done, Janet, and thank you, Laura. Let's move right along onto Entrepreneur of the Year. Here is the shortlist with some pretty good runners and riders, so time to place your bets. We welcome Hella Wozniak from Sister Snog to tell us who was first past the post. 
The winner has a finger on the pulse and according to the judges, is creating a thriving community. And as one judge put it, communities are going to be more relevant as we move into the new normal. The winner is Mary Bonser from FLEX. Thank you so much, everyone. This is very much a team effort. So go Team Flex. Thank you. We'll be drinking this tonight. Thanks, Hella. Now we have Male Diversity Champion of the Year. Here are the names on the scoreboard. We hand back over to Simone Broadhurst now to tell us who's coming out top. The winner used to work at a major law firm, but left a secure job to set up a practice to encourage women to enter the profession. The winner is Christopher White, Aspiring Solicitors. I'm gonna keep this uncharacteristically short. Thank you, thank you, and thanks again. Our focus now turns to the Mentor of the Year. Let's review the lucky finalists on screen now. We have Joanna Harris from Simmons & Simmons to tell us who's the pick of these particular pops. The judges singled out the winner for mentoring numerous women throughout her career, not only in the legal profession, but also in the wider business world. The winner is Leslie Gregory, Memory Crystal. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be a winner at these prestigious awards. Hey! Our next category, ladies and gentlemen, is in-house lawyer of the year. And here are the names topping the bill. But who takes the headline slot? Please welcome Evelyn Stiles from Hayes PLC to tell us. The winner has been leading the DNI agenda within a very male dominated profession. The winner is Sonia Jande, Aviva Investors. Congratulations, Sonia. Before we move on to the next category, just a quick reminder about the charity and Twitter info. Please do use the link below to donate and continue tagging us on Twitter. It looks like some of you are having great fun. Now we move to the Law Firm Leader of the Year. But Nicholas Sheffings from Hogan Lovells is here to tell us who's triumphant. The winner has steered her firm through two successful mergers. She has secured 45% women representation at board level. She is a great champion and influencer of culture, diversity and women's careers. The winner is Penelope Warren, CMS. Congratulations, Penelope. Next, we reveal the highest climbers in our Barrister Advocate of the Year. And here are the all important entries. Faisal Sadiq from Hardwick, please tell us who our winner is. This winner has been instrumental in highlighting the plight of victims of different facets of domestic violence, including coercive behavior. It is an area of law that is still vastly underdeveloped, inconsistent, and lacking in sufficient understanding, according to the judges. The winner is Claire Wade QC, Garden Court Chambers. Now
Next, we need to find who's climbed top spot for Outstanding Returner of the Year. Here are the finalists. But what was the judge's verdict? Dominique Graham from Signium. Please tell us who came out on top. One judge described the winner as an incredibly impressive individual whose local initiative to help mothers return to work could and should be replicated across the country. So the winner is Sarah Green from TLT. Well done, Sarah. And now to our rising star categories. First up, we have Rising Star Private Practice Lawyer of the Year. Which of these names has their eyes on the prize? We go back to Simone Broadhurst now to reveal the winner. Over to you, Simone. The judges said the winner was a strong contender for being a future star given her clear ability to balance the legal aspects of a case with commercial considerations. The winner is Helen Souter, Simmons and Simmons. <laughs> Next up is Rising Star In-House Lawyer of the Year, and this is the shortlist. Who's hit number one here, Simone? The judges singled out the winner for punching above her weight and for her refreshing contribution and energy towards a project to promote the benefits of in-house law to young and newly qualified solicitors. The winner is Charlotte Lakin, Global. Well done, Charlotte. Our next rundown is for Rising Star Barrister Advocate of the Year. Hoping to be top dog are on the screen now. Simone, please tell us who's come out on top. The judges were wowed by the winner's references from solicitors and QCs and singled out both her mentoring and her work combating female genital mutilation. The winner is Dr. Charlotte Proudman, Goldsmith Chambers. Well done to you. Rising Star, Legal Services Innovator of the Year is up next and here are the nominees. We have Julia Salaski from Legal now. Please tell us the winner. You know you want to. Congratulations to the winner of this year's Rising Star Legal Innovator of the Year. The winner launched a consultancy with five legal consultants and solicitors, four of whom are women and all of whom are from non-traditional backgrounds or the first in their families to go to university. All the while she was completing a 12 month pupillage in chambers. The winner is Tonika Alsendor, Alsendor Law, Tucker Solicitors. Just quickly before we go on, just a gentle reminder about the charity auction and donation link on the page below with all proceeds going to Women's Aid. Congratulations to all our rising star number ones. Next, we have our unsung hero category and the finalists are on screen now. But what did the judges decide? Helen Burness from She Breaks the Law. Our unsung hero has been involved in developing the Mindful Business Charter 
which is aimed at reducing unnecessary sources of stress and increasing well-being in the profession. The Charter has already been adopted by leading law firms, underlying the impact of her work. And the winner is Kate Emily Dodd from Pinsent Masons. Hello, thank you so much um, for whoever nominated me for this award. I'm absolutely delighted to win it. What a great cause. Now we come to the Supplier of the Year category. Simone Broadhurst is back to tell us the winner. The judges felt one entry was ahead of the pack in this category. The winning company was founded on the ethos of promoting diversity within the legal profession. 90% of the core team is female, 65% of its legal consultants are female and 12% are returners. The winner is Obelisk Support. Thank you. Now we move on to the Law Firm of the Year, Small Medium Firms. Here is the shortlist. Tuvia Borok from Goldman Sachs. Please tell us who was the most triumphant. The winner is a new model law firm which takes on consultants on a fee share basis, helping it to achieve stellar gender balance according to the judges. And the winner is Setford Solicitors. Congratulations. Our next category is Law Firm of the Year Large Firms. And here are the names in lights. Over to Simone again to tell us whose light is shining brighter than the others. The winning firm has incorporated gender equality into its strategy and impressed the judging panel with its willingness to track and measure the effectiveness of its policies, which is vital and often overlooked parts of any diversity and inclusion programme. The winner's accolade goes to Shoesmiths. Now, we turn our attention to the Gender Diversity Project of the Year category. To tell us the judges' favourite, we have Pepe Sapal from Fairplay Talks. The judges described the winning project as a superb example of a successful returners programme. This project set out to address a specific need and achieved excellent results according to the judges. The winner is... Allen and Overy. Thank you. Thanks, Peppy. Now we go to Diversity Project of the Year. Here are the finalists. Come in, Simon, to tell us the result. The winner has implemented a Brain Diversity Action Plan based on the recommendations and principles of the Race at Work Charter. Key elements include a BAME mentoring programme, the capturing of ethnicity data, a review of learning and development content to ensure BAME inclusion and active support of ethnic minority career progression at the firm. In this category, the judges awarded are highly commended to Barclays, but the winner's trophy goes to Simmons and Simmons. Now 
out, we have the Women of the Year category, which was an extremely tough category for the judges to decide. Let's look at the names. We have Stephanie Boyce from the Law Society here to present this one. Over to you, Stephanie. The judges were inspired by the winner who eloquently described the challenges she faced becoming a top lawyer given a background that was far removed from that of the vast majority of her colleagues at the top of the profession. And she is determined to ensure that young women can develop and grow in nurturing collegiate atmosphere. She is a social mobility ambassador for her professional body and she established a programme in her region to encourage state school students aged 14 to 16 to consider a career in law. I am pleased to announce that the winner is Mary Pryor QC, the 36 Group London. Well done, Mary. A great award. Now, we have a very special award for this year and our final award to announce today, the Special Contribution Award. There's no shortlist for this category, so we hand straight over to Mary Heaney at Global Legal Post to reveal all. The winner of this award spearheaded a project which caught the imagination of the legal profession in 2019. The first 100 years project celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Parliamentary Act that allowed women to enter the legal profession by highlighting the achievements of prominent women lawyers who have made it to the top despite the obstacles in their way. A glittering array of the great and the good took part. At the same time, she and her colleagues used the occasion as an opportunity to highlight the challenges facing women lawyers today and seek to accelerate the cause of gender equality in the coming years. The winner of the Special Contribution Award is Dana Dennis-Smith. Congratulations, Dana, well done, well deserved. Thank you to the judges and to the team for honouring me tonight. I'm delighted to be accepting this special award and um, I'm really truly thrilled and humbled that you have selected me. Of course, when I started the first 100 years project, I had incredibly big dreams. I wanted us um, women in law to make the biggest celebration possible of the forthcoming centenary of women in law. Little was known at the time when we started in 2014, but luckily by the time 2019 arrived, the year of the centenary, that had changed. I had dreams and I had an aspiration that women in law felt a sense of belonging, that they constructed their careers on the back of the legal pioneers that walked before them. That they could stay to have a whole career in law and to achieve on a par with the male, male, male colleagues. I set out to have the most amazing um, project and I'm so happy when I look back at everything that we, with a very te a small team of volunteers primarily, have managed to achieve in that time. Everything from an exhibition that has gone around the country and informed people of the women in law and their journey to date, to our book, to um, the numerous films with role models of women in law, um, and also to the artwork that we have managed to donate to the Supreme Court in London, um, depicting for the first time women in law. I'm really, really delighted that um, our work is being recognised. I do not see this award as an individual one for me. I believe it belongs to all those that have supported us um, over the years, champions, trustees, the team, and all those that decided to take part and make it the biggest celebration in the way that we had envisaged at the start. Our work is not done, of course. Um, the next century belongs to women and we're sure um, to follow um, their journey, but also apart from celebrating new role models and um, the careers out of women who are coming um, now into the profession, we want to make sure that um, the next generation has a level playing field and they can be the best they can be. 
So our dream continues because we still have aspiration for the generations that are coming through. Thank you again for making me this great honor and uh, congratulations to all those that have won tonight. Thank you. And so we reach the end of our awards and many congratulations to all our winners today. Please do use our Twitter hashtag to show us your celebrations from today. We thank you all for your support for the Women in Law Awards 2020. Please don't forget to make your donations and bids to help the important work Women's Aid are doing.